Hello. Uh, today we will be solving this problem called uh, traffic lights. So there is a street of length x whose positions are numbered 0, 1 to x. Initially there are no traffic lights, but n sets of traffic lights are added to the street one after another. Your task is to calculate the length of the longest passage without traffic lights after each addition. So the first input line contains one integer, contains two integers x and n, the length of the street and the number of sets of traffic lights. And x can be as large as a billion and n can be as large as 2 times 10 to the fifth. Then, the next line contains n integers p1 to pn, the position of each set of traffic light. Each position is distinct. So, after, each, after reading each new addition, we have, to <coughs> we have to print the length of the longest passage without traffic lights after each, uh, after each addition. Okay, so let's check out this example. So the, in this example, the length of our street is 8. So this is 0, this is 8. So our initial answer is obviously 8 because we can go all the way through this street without, with no traffic lights. So answer equals 8. Okay, then we're going to add a traffic light at position 3. So this is half 3, should be somewhere like this. Now, what is the longest uh, length that, that we can go without uh, running into a traffic light? So it's either going to be this part or this part. Okay, so the length of this first part is 3 and the second part is 5. So the answer becomes 5. Then we're gonna add the, this, this traffic light at position 6. 6 should be somewhere around here. Okay, and this means that now we have segments of length 3, 3 and 2. So the answer becomes 3 and finally we will add a traffic light at position 2. So this becomes 2, 1, 3 and 2 and the answer is still 3. So how can we go about solving a problem like this? So basically here we said that this can go can be as large as 10 times uh, like uh, as large as a billion so we cannot store this position the whole uh, the whole street as a, as an array or something so we have to deal with these elements but how can we deal with them effectively like if this wall there wasn't this constraint of uh, add a new elements then it would be easy like if there were in fact these many traffic lights we will just add them sort the array and go through like for each position we will check the previous position and update our max that would initialize with zero with this so we update max with two minus zero so it becomes two and then three minus two and then six minus three and so on so that would do the trick but uh, these additions are dynamic so we have to answer after each addition so we could solve our problem using this brute force approach this or this inefficient algorithm so we would declare a vector and at the beginning we we'll just insert 0 and x and then after reading each value we would read that value and push it into our vector like in that example our vector started with 0 and 8 and then the first element we read was 3 so we would push 3 into our vector so it becomes 0, 8, 3 
then we would sort it so it becomes 038 then we would perform what we just described like we would go through our array to find the maximal difference between two consecutive elements and here the answer would print 5 and we would repeat this process but the complexity here like for each iteration we perform here we perform uh, something like n log n here and here's something like complexity n so for each element we would have something like n square log n total complexity which is bad so how can we speed up this process so let's think about something else here we said that at each time uh, to update the answer, the answer would be dependent on the value we just added and the values next to it. So if we knew at each time, at each position, uh, the value we added and the values next to it, then we would have an, an edge in finding the solution. And what data structure would allow us to do something like this? Uh, a set has, so if we check out sets, if we go here and look for set, it has a previous and a next uh, operations, advanced, so here it is, prev and next. So if we have any iterator and we apply this prev to it, it would give us the previous uh, elements, like here. Uh -huh. It would insert all elements from 0 to 90 into this and the last element would be the previous of the end which makes sense okay so if we apply this prev and next uh, to a set we would let's see what we would have so let's let's consider our set okay so let's consider a set containing these elements so our set in the beginning would contain just our boundary 0 and 8 okay and then let's just see what happens with this first example if we insert 3 here and we do something like prev 3 it would give us 0 we do something like next 3 it would give us 8 and since here we only have three elements, then the answer gotta be something like three minus zero or eight minus three. And that's why the answer here is five. So that's pretty much the idea, but this is not enough. Because if we have more elements, then it would become, it would be very complicated. So we need to keep track of the previous answer and we need to know if the change we had we performed affected the previous answer or not so here it would be helpful to have a, an additional set or rather a multi-set so let's have a multi-set of lengths that contains all possible lengths and it has to be a multi-set because here if we inserted four for example then uh, we would have two lengths that are equal to four. So it's better to have a multi-set here. And what we will do is insert the initial value we had here. The total length at the beginning was just eight. Okay, nice. Then what we would do is insert the element 3 here okay so we're just gonna insert 3 and as we said we're gonna find the prev and the next so the prev was 0 and the next was 8 and what happened here since 3 came between 0 and 8 then the previous length that consisted of 8 minus 0 should not exist anymore because it got broken by this three. So we have to look for this length, namely the length between next 
Van and Preval. So this length should get erased because it does not exist anymore. That's why we would need to erase this 8 and then insert the new lengths we created which are 3 minus 0 and then 8 minus 3 which is 5. And to print the answer we would just print uh, the reverse begin iterator. So if we see here for a set or a multi set mm, containers set begin okay so it has mm -hmm. it has a reverse begin returns reverse iterator to reverse begin so basically begin gives us the smallest element in the set reverse begin gives us an iterator to the largest element in the set so we will just print the reverse begin of this set in this case it's 5 okay and then we would insert 6 we would insert 6 into our set and then the prev of 6 is 3 next of 6 is 8 as we said we need to erase the distance that was created by these two which in this case is 5 so we erase 5 and then we insert the distances we're gonna create between 6 and 3 which is 3 see here we ended up with two threes that's why we needed the multi set and then 8 minus 6 which is 2 and if we perform the reverse begin we're gonna get 3 as we said next we're gonna insert 2 okay and prev of 2 would be 0 next of 2 would be 3 okay and the distance between 0 and 3 is 3 so we have to erase 1 3 and as we said here in order to erase if you do something like let's call our multi set mult and you do something like erase 3 then it would erase all occurrences of 3 so this is bad so what we need to do is to first perform uh, like get an iterator that is equal to mult dot find three. So you would find one of these iterators. So you would return, for example, this, and then we will do erase mult dot erase it. So you would just erase one three, not all of them. Okay, so you would erase one three and you would erase uh, and then we will have to insert 2 minus 0 which is 2 and 3 minus 2 which is 1 and the answer is still 3 so that's pretty much it we will use a set and a multi set a set for the positions of the traffic lights and a multi set for the lengths we have so far and this will be sufficient to find to solve this problem and let's talk about complexity so all in all we're gonna insert n elements into our set so this would be something like n log n and for each element we insert we're gonna find a prev and the next so that takes two log n no not even so this is in all of one because we just look to the previous and to the next element so that's fine and then uh, for our multi set we're gonna insert uh, n minus uh, one or even more so we're gonna insert some uh, lengths into our set erase some lengths and basically so we're gonna perform some order of n times uh, log n operation that's why our total complexity would be just n log n which is fast enough to pass and this is way better than our n square log n we talked about in the other implementation. So let's check out the code. So we'll start by reading x and n. Then we will declare a set that will contain our position. 
and a multi set that will contain our lengths. Then we will insert the initial position 0 and the last position x, and then we will insert our initial length which is x minus 0. Then for each element, for each new value, we're gonna scan. We're gonna start by scanning this added value, then we're gonna insert it into our set, find the previous element, uh, find an iterator to it first, then with this iterator, we're gonna use prev to find uh, the previous iterator to this one, and we're gonna dereference it to get the previous value. And the same thing with the next value, we're gonna use the next operator to find the next iterator to our iter, and we're gonna dereference de it to get the next value. Then we gonna, as we said, we need to erase that length because it does not exist anymore. There is now a traffic light between previous val and next val. That's why we have to erase uh, that length from our lengths. But, but as we said, we should not do something like erase next val minus previous val because this would erase all occurrences, all of this value from our multiset. That's why we need to find uh, an iterator first by using the find method and then erase that iterator. Next, we're gonna insert the new lengths we've got, which are added minus previous val and next val minus added. And at the end, we just print, uh, we dereference the reverse begin iterator and just print it. Uh, so that's pretty much it. I don't think I need a new line here. Did you? Oh, yes. We just print them on the same line. So I'll just add a space here. So that's it. Let's go ahead and submit. So that worked. Uh, thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.